morning, team. Happy Tuesday. I'm Amy Kaur, and I'm joined by Kevin Van Eck, and we are live out of the Goose Island office. And for all of you who are Star Wars fans, may the 4th be with you. In all seriousness, I hope you are having a great start to your day. So let's grab your cup of coffee or your cup of tea, and let's jump into the latest episode of Coffee with Amy and Kevin. Yes, good morning, Amy. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you have your beverage like Amy mentions. Today is an anniversary. Today is an anniversary. If you can believe this, rewind one year, 12 months, we started Do It Now. So let's think back to what was going on a year ago. There was a ton of uncertainty. We didn't know what was going to happen in our business. We didn't know what was going to happen in our communities. We didn't know really a lot. We couldn't predict what was going to happen. And a lot of us were overcome with stress. And so we talked about in Do It Now, how to control the things we can control and not to stress about those things that we can't. And in Do It Now, it was all about taking action. It was all about taking action, whether it was small or big steps, doing things that would impact what we can control and getting us to where we wanted to go, regardless of what was happening in the environment around us. So one year ago, Do It Now, we focused on action. That's right, Kevin. And here we are now, one year later, and we want to send the same message. We're four months into 2021, and it is a super busy market. It's kind of crazy. It's actually very different than last year. We're super busy. There's not a lot of inventory. We've got stressed out buyers and stressed out sellers. And let's face it, we also have stressed out brokers, right? Um, but we're managing new things this year and they are a lot of different things that we haven't been presented with in quite some time. We've got appraisal issues that we're looking at. We've got escalation clauses. We've got multiple offers. There's lots of new things that we are navigating. And But the message is really the same as it was last year. When we talked about do it now, we really focused in on the idea that there are going to be things in the market that you cannot control. Dynamics that are happening that there's not much we can do uh, ourselves to change. But then there are our aspects of the business and what you're doing that you can control. And so we want you to think about that this year as well. And we want you to think about how you can take simple, smart action to make sure you're moving your business forward. Now, some of you might be really busy, lots of deals going on and feeling a little stressed, but there's also a lot of you out there that may not be as busy as you want to and sort of feeling concerned when you're looking around that others are doing a lot more than you are. You need to get over that and you need to focus on what you can do to create success in your business and to take action or to do it now. So today we wanted to focus on one element that we touched on last year during Do It Now and it's called the eight by eight. It's an amazing way for you to create some structure around the outreach that you are going to do to people in your sphere. And the beauty of it is you can use the eight by eight for lots of different scenarios, but it's a great way to set Set up some structure, create a process that makes it really easy to follow through. And the whole intent is to use the eight by eight to strengthen your relationships so that they in turn will help you grow your business. That's right, Amy. The eight by eight is super powerful and we're going to share some ways to effectively use the eight by eight. But let's start by what it is. What the eight by eight is, is a pre-planned program with eight different outreaches in eight different ways to the same person. So what that means is when we do, let's say, get a referral or we meet someone at an open house or we are connected with a brand new client, there are eight different ways that we have the ability to reinforce and really kickstart our relationship with them. So let's continue with the referral. Let's say that someone in our database has referred us and they're a past client. So how do we reinforce that behavior and show our appreciation? Oftentimes what we do is we wait until that referral closes. And then if we remember, we try and figure out a gift or something to send. What the eight by eight does is it automatically, immediately reinforces that behavior. And it's really key. It's not about the outcome at the end. It's about that past client referring you and remembering to say your name. So we want to reward that as quickly as possible. So with the eight by eight, you have the ability to plan it out ahead of time. So there's no thinking involved. You don't need to stutter step and consider and think about exactly what to send or do. You've got the eight steps planned out. So 
let's pretend with this referral. Here's what I might suggest if I had gotten a referral. So the first outreach, and this is so simple, is that I'm going to call that past client on the phone and thank them. If they don't answer, fine. I'm going to leave a voicemail. No problem. So that's one. Number two, second outreach, I'm going to send them a gift card, maybe for a cup of coffee and a handwritten note immediately that same day. I'm going to make sure it gets in the mail immediately. The next outreach, number three, I'm going to reach out to them again, maybe through a text and let them know that I've made contact with their referral and I'm really looking forward to working with them. And then fourth would be sending a note letting them know that you are actively working with that client that they referred. Perhaps it's a handwritten note again, or maybe it's a text or a video message. Mix it up. Eight outreaches, eight different ways. Step five would be asking for suggestions of a specific closing gift for their friend. So this is planning ahead and making sure that you're able to make it personal when the referral closes. But it's a reason to reach out to that initial referral source. Six, add them to your cap gift list. Make sure they get the next cap gift. Seven, sending them a note, maybe calling them, letting them know that their friend successfully closed. And then lastly, perhaps number eight is that would be something maybe more substantial. Maybe a gift after closing. This eight by eight program is really huge in the fact that there are eight touches that are going to reinforce your appreciation and keeping that person in the loop on what's happening with their referral so that they feel more confident the next time they are presented with an opportunity to refer you, that you will take great care of them. I absolutely love this, Kevin. And the beauty of the 8x8 is that you can use it in so many different scenarios. So you can use it for clients or friends who are referring business to you, just as Kevin and gave an example of. You can use it for follow-up with somebody that maybe you just met at an open house and you knew that they seemed really interested and hot to buy a property and you want to try and convert them into a client. You can also use it when you're trying to get the attention of the people within your sphere. So I've got a great example of an agent who actually reached out to Kevin and I maybe two weeks ago and he is focusing on using the 8 by 8 to get in front of his top 100 people in the CRM. So he He's ranked them all and he's put a program together so that he can consistently stay in touch with the idea to strengthen the relationship and hopefully gain referrals as a result. So the first outreach, he's simply going to do an introduction about himself. This is cool. You could do this in a number of ways. We've got that amazing gatefold that a lot of agents are using as a nice branding piece. That's something that you could put together and you could send it out to your top sphere of influence. It doesn't have to be 100 people. It could be 50. It could be two. It's whoever you want to focus on. Then the second outreach is sending an item of value. We have a lot of great things that we have already at App Properties. Think about the neighborhood guides that we have available and ready for you to use. We've got listing books, lots of different cool materials that you can send that would show or be an item of value. Third outreach is something related to the time of year. So let's say you're sending something out in the next couple of weeks. Everybody's thinking about spring cleaning. Lord knows I am, especially as it just got warm and we had to turn on our HVAC, uh, our air conditioning unit, right? So you could send something out that articulates spring cleaning or how to get ready for the summer season, or if it's towards the holidays, you know, how to decorate your exterior for the holidays. Whatever it may be, you can create something around the time of year. And again, it focuses on the home. Then you could also do a fourth outreach, which would be in information about the hyper local real estate market. Let's face it right now, who isn't interested in finding out what's going on hyper locally. You could do an easy info sparks and get some information to let them know what's happening in their neighborhood. Fifth, you could do a personal outreach with a handwritten note. You could do even a small little pop by or a small little gift in the mail. Again, depending on time of year, what your budget looks like and what you want to send or get in front of this potential group. Sixth, you could actually then go a little bit deeper into the market information and you can send a real estate review and or with a CMA, right? So giving them a little bit more contextual information about what's happening in their neighborhood and how it relates to their house. Then your seventh outreach, you could actually do a phone call to schedule a dinner, a coffee, or maybe even a lunch. Actually seeing if you can connect, maybe to follow up and talk about the real estate review that you sent, 
or just to, in general, be able to catch up and connect. And then the last piece, the eighth, would be that actual face-to-face -face meeting. So it's really easy when you break it down. Again, it is eight different outreaches, eight different times. And you can do this, for example, this particular agent is doing it every two weeks. You could do it week by week. You could break something down month by month. So you're hitting them eight times in eight months. There's all different ways that you can use this eight by eight functionality. But I'm telling you, once you lay it out and you create the opportunity to have a process, it makes it so much easier to implement. So here's how you can get to work on your eight by eight plans. We have included the templates down below for familiar situations where you might use this. And I want you to think a little bit outside of the box too. Oftentimes when we think about referrals, we think about past clients or people from our database referring us, use this with other agents as well. If you get referrals from other agents outside of our market and you have a relationship with them, this is a way to reinforce that as well. This is a good way to reinforce that behavior and make an impact with the agents who have people relocating to Chicago. So with these templates, the best advice we can give is to set up the steps in advance. Set those up now so that when you do get a referral, when you do meet someone at an open house, that you have the ability to immediately implement the eight by eight to reinforce the relationship and grow it as quickly as possible. So bottom line, remember that these relationships are the core of our business. It's the core of our industry, has been and will be. And we talk about it a lot. There's a lot of disruption or a lot of things coming at us in our industry, trying to interrupt our relationship with our clients. The 8x8 is one more way that you have the ability to ensure that nobody can break our relationships. So no matter what market you're in, we would say do it now. That's right, people. Do it now. Make it a great day and just do it now. And may the fourth be with you. I was trying to do, but this is like from Star Trek. No, it's not Nanu, Nanu. That's from Mork and Mindy. Yeah, I don't know. I can only do it on this finger. Isn't that funny? This one won't do it. Your nails look nice. Nanu.